Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Center Crown. My name is Joy, and this is the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, I just worked our way down from the shrine. Um, had to climb down. I figured I'd spare you guys that run back. Um, let's see. Do that. So create another bridge. Get another Korok leaf. Here we go. Oh my god! Are you for real? This fucking game. Ugh. Oh, fuck that one up, didn't I? Also, that reminds me, I should probably save. I haven't saved yet. <laughs> there is an autosave, but uh, it's not super great sometimes. Anyway. God, I can't believe I... That's two episodes now in a row where I've started the game by eating shit and dying. So let's see if we can cook this crazy little stew that he's got going on. Oh, -ho. um, let's see. And this is baby's first cooking. Aw, um, we're gonna use a pepper and a drumstick, and we're gonna cook. Spicy meat and seafood fry. Yep, we did it. Grants low-level cold resistance. A filling dish made by cooking fresh seafood and meat together. So you can see that little snowflake down for a minute and 30, or three minutes and 30 seconds. So that means that we can survive those frigid temperatures up there for three minutes and 30 seconds. Check in meals ingredients by selecting it from your inventory and selecting recipe. So it's just telling us what we put in there. Anyway. How is your shrine exploration going? What are you doing? <laughs> this body of mine isn't what it used to be. Recovering from a bout of hard work takes a while. If you're hungry, I have an empty pot you can use to cook yourself a meal. I cooked something. Um, I'm gonna ask him for tips first. Simply open your inventory, grab hold of your ingredients, and toss them in. Try to consider how the ingredients will complement one another. You can even make a dish that increases your stamina. It's all about being creative and trying different things. Oh, ho, ho. Here, I'm gonna tell him I cook something. If you're moved by any wild culinary inspirations, feel free to cook yourself a meal using my pot over here. I cook something. Huh. Wait, is that? That looks like my signature perfect dish, spicy meat and seafood fry. Hmm. But how did you? Well, I suppose it's not important. Can I trouble you to share the recipe? Hmm. Ah, of course, Hyrule Bass. How could I have forgotten? Hmm. Well done. Now please allow me to reward your culinary efforts with this warm doublet. Cold resistance, a warm pullover typically worn by mountain folk. It is stir it's sturdy fabric and thick gloves are great at retaining body heat. With that, you'll be able to resist the bite of colder environments. As for me, I know a great spicy meat and seafood fry recipe, so I can do without that warm doublet. We're gonna just pop this bad boy on. And you can see um, right below our stamina wheel, I want you to notice something. So if we put our shirt on, you can kind of see the temperature, and it's quite high right now because we're standing near a fire. It's very interesting how the environment works. It works realistically. Um, but once we put it on, notice the cold side of the Fahrenheit meter. It drops way down. So that actually means that we can handle up to that point before we get cold again. So it gives us more room for our little meter to swing back and forth. It also has a one snowflake down meter below. We can have up to two. Later we'll be in environments where we need two layers of um, sort of frost protection. And I'm actually going to jump up here to Owadayam Shrine. And this is what the teleportation feature looks like. Um, and as we get deeper in this game, I'm gonna talk about some things that I'm noticing that sort of connect it back to other Zeldas, um, other Zelda games in the franchise. Cause there are some things where I'm like, ha, huh, that seems oddly connected Nintendo. Would you like to elaborate on that? And uh, we'll, we'll see if they ever do. But for now, and for the record, when I was playing this in my first playthrough, again, I missed those clothes in the in the outset. So I was running around shirtless, even in the snow, which is where we're about to head to. We're about to head into the snow. This is how you're supposed to do it, um, is pants and the warm doublet. However, we also have the spicy meat and seafood fry. That's what I was, I was cooking things with hot peppers in it to keep me warm. Um, on this mountain because I was too dumb to figure out the, uh, it wasn't 
so much too dumb. I was just too slow to catch a Hyrule Bass, and I was just overwhelmed by, oh my god, my weapons break, and where am I, and what am I doing? And, you know, I haven't played a Zelda since N64, you know, so. And that music that just started, and you can also see our cheeks get a little rosy. You can see them here. And, you know, our uh, breath is coming out in puffs of air. That's how you know it's cold. And also this music in the background. We can see a Bokoblin camp over there. And also because there's, you know, snow everywhere. So, we can figure out where we're headed. Uh, we're gonna have to go around this way, I'm thinking. And I don't know if I have the stamina to get up this mountain, but by golly, I'm gonna try. Yeah, we should have enough. And then from there, we should be able to see our path to the shrine a little bit easier. You use more stamina climbing up than you do climbing down. Um, sort of like how it's harder to go up a set of stairs than go down them. Um, and are we at the top of Mount Hylia? No, we're not. I was going to say, I'm like, I thought Mount Hylia was actually quite a bit harder to uh, climb than that. And some of these stones will be magnetic. That's why I'm messing with that. There we go. We leave little footprints in the snow. We can also push these. There. And I think that'll actually crash into something. I don't know what it crashes into, but it's rolling. Oh yeah, I, I'm full on everything. Blech. But the moon rising. Uh, we'll- we'll encounter some interesting shit with the moon later. Um, I'm wondering if it'll be the same timing as my other place, where I hope so, because that cracked me up. And if not, I'll explain it to you when we get there, but... For now, let's just make our way over to the shrine. God, this is so much easier with the warm doublet. Before, I was, like, hauling ass because I was trying to get up there with, you know, only three minutes to spare. Um, because, you know, I cooked that spicy meal and I was running around shirtless in the snow. You know, how far we've come. <laughs> a little bit of knowledge goes a long way. So we can come up here. And, uh, you don't want to get in water in cold environments because it'll actually sap your health because, obviously, it's freezing cold water. And, uh, there is something that warns you about that. I believe the game gives you a little tip being like, hey... No matter what heat resistance, even if you've eaten like a spicy stew, what have you, um, it's not enough to protect you from something like that. So, something to keep in mind. And that should be, yeah, that's the top of Mount Hylia, and I'm actually going to jog up there to see if we can find anything. There might be something waiting for us up there, can't remember, but let's find out. The game is kind. It realizes if you're in this area of the map, you probably don't have a lot of stamina. So it just gives you this nice little path to run up. To get to the top of Mount Hylia. And over there is, um... That's a completely different area. This is actually the way to Gerudo Valley. Um, which I don't believe it's actually referred to as Gerudo Valley in this game. I think it's just Gerudo. Like, um, that's just the region name. So... But yes, the Gerudo women are back, and better than ever, let me say. <laughs> oh my god, hi, I- fuck. That guy scared the shit out of me, I did not expect him up here. Search. Uh. Flint, strike it with a metallic weapon to generate a spark. This portable fire starter breaks after one use, but you can create a long-lasting flame if you use it near firewood. You need to hit it with a metal weapon, specifically. Dude, you scared me. The fierce cold atop these mountains can take quite a toll as the night sets in. Oh, breathtaking view. This might be the best place to get a full view of the entire plateau. Use your scope to look for shrines. When you locate one, place a pin on your map as a marker. Bitch, I don't need that. It's over there. God, he scared the shit out of me. I did not expect him to be up here. Sorry. Um, but I'm gonna run on down. Because I know where the shrine is. Because I already stuck a pin in it. And you'll be noticing, hey, the circle's down here. But it's incomplete. Oh, we're gonna slide down. There we go. But it's incomplete. What's up with that? 
If I can find a stone, yes, I can. Here it is. Pick it up. Oh my god, we're about to get introduced to one of the most endearing and annoying parts of this game. You ready? Yahaha! Yeah. Yeah, you found me! Huh, you're not Hestu. But you can see me? I didn't know your kind could see the children of the forest. <laughs> well, if you run into Hestu, please return this to him. It's a Korok seed. This small seed was given to you by a Korok. It has a distinct smell. If you gather a bunch of them, you'll never know what might happen. Oh, and my friends are hiding in lots of different places too. Don't be shy about poking your nose into suspicious places. <laughs> Tweehee! This is a lot of fun. Watch this. Uh. Uh. I want him to say, yeah! That's another one he'll do. Yeah! There he goes. Anyway, those are Koroks. Nut boys. <laughs> As I've heard them referred to on the internet. There are 900 of these motherfuckers in this game. I've only found 120 on my other game. Only 120. And uh, there are all of these stupid little puzzles around Hyrule. Some are easy. Some are as simple as picking up a rock and all of a sudden it'll be like, yeah, ha, ha, you found me. And it's like, oh shit, I wasn't even looking for you. Um, they're everywhere. They're fucking everywhere. Um, how a Korok seed is used is you need to find Hestu, that guy that they're talking about. And you can actually exchange seeds to him to expand your uh, slots for shields, bows and arrows, and weapons. So... That's how you expand your inventory in those areas. Um, is by collecting Korok seeds and exchanging them with Hestu. And here we have a bunch of keys. Ah, oh, and style people! Get the fuck away from me. Oh, what do I want to use? Let's get rid of this guy first. <laughs> no! Oh, he charged me. Get away! There we go. Bye. Uh, Oh god, I'm running out of shit. No, he picked up his head. Die. No. You also die. Okay, there we go. Get some materials for our trouble. Is that a key swing? It is. I want that. I also want the book cobbling thing. Get that key swing. And I don't want an arm. Get that weak shit out of my face. But we can come up. Oh, hello. That's a snowball. We have fire arrows, you guys. Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I could use fire arrows. Hold on. Those are exploding barrels. Hold on. There we go. Caught his ass on fire. There we go. Oh, don't you throw that shit at me, you little punk. Here we can pick up some weapons and some materials. Uh, get some seared steak for our trouble, and I'm actually gonna eat that. Uh, replenish our health. But, uh, that was a very poorly placed bomb barrel that, uh, usually they're not quite so stupidly placed. Um, anyway, we can get up to the shrine now that we've dealt with the enemies in our way. Um, here, I'm just gonna. Yep, see, we took some damage there because the water was too cold. But you can see that there's a treasure chest. But god, how do we get to it if we can't get in the water? Hmm, I wonder if the shrine that we're about to unlock, the K. Namut shrine, will give us some insight to how we can reach that. God, this is so much easier when you're not running for your life on three and a half minutes worth of spicy stew. Just gotta reiterate that point again. Dress for the weather, people. And now we can see in the time, in the time right, in the top right, we have a little Korok seed symbol. And, uh, yeah, once again, keeping track of your progress. And we are about to get our last rune on the plateau. To you who sets foot in the shrine, I am Kay Namut. In the name of the goddess Hylia, I offer this trial. The Cryonosis trial, or the Cryon... Cryonus trial. Cry Cryonus? I've never had to say that out loud before, sorry. 
But if you remember your Greek and Latin roots, cryo means cold, means freeze, specifically. Makes sense that a freezing rune would be available in a snowy mountain. Cryonis. Cry Cryonis. Yeah, I guess it's Cryonis. Um, Cryonis? Don't know. Whatever. Anyway, Cryonis. Create a pillar of ice from a water surface. Build ice pillars that are very stable. These pillars can be used as stepping stones or as obstacles. Use Cryonis. Cryonis, sorry, Jesus, on an ice pillar to break it. So I actually use these primarily as stepping stones uh, when I do use them. And you can use them in bodies of water specifically. You can see it there. You can climb them, which makes them very useful. So if you're swimming in water and you're running out of stamina, you can make one. Well, you can't make one while you're swimming, unfortunately, but you can also break it. So that's cool. Let's see if there's anything I'm missing over here. But yeah, we can do this. Lift us up. We can also put it under that and it'll lift up the gate. Ah, uh, it's a guardian. Oh, don't you back away from me, you little shit. He was gonna fire a beam at me, did you see that? Little punk. Here, let me switch to a less good weapon. There we go. And now I'm trying to think. And, uh... I don't think they would start mixing runes on us just yet, but... You never know. The reason I did that was to see if there was any hidden magnetic panels. Oh, there we go. No, but there is a hidden treasure chest. Ayo. Give me that good shit. Traveler spear. There we go. Good shit. Um, ah. There we go. Tilt it up so we can climb. And is there anything that I would want that I can see? Yeah, I d they don't really hide much in these first couple of uh, tutorial shrines. But later on, they get very tricky with how they hide things. Like, you see me looking over there, because that's, you know, they'll typically put it in some shitty place that's really hard to reach. Your resourcefulness in overcoming this trial speaks to the promise of a hero. Give me my spirit orb. Dun dun na na na. And he'll also refill your... They'll they'll heal you. They'll fill up whatever, how many hearts you have. Something nice about the shrines is even if you get your ass kicked in one. And yes, we will have to battle much stronger things in shrines. Um, it'll refill your hearts at the end when you reach the monk. A plume of smoke in the distance is a good sign that you might find someone at its origin. You think, Nintendo? Weapon bonuses, yeah. Yeah, this game has a lot going on. Oh! With this, you have now acquired all the spirit orbs from the shrines on this plateau. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, extraordinary. <laughs> that means it is finally time. Link, it is finally time for me to tell you everything. But first... Hmm. Imagine an X on your map with the four shrines as the endpoints. Find the spot where those lines intersect. I shall wait for you there. You cryptic ass motherfucker. Do you understand? Where two lines connecting the shrines across there, I will be waiting. You mystical motherfucker! Okay. So if we think about the shrines and we imagine an X where they intersect. Oh, it's the Temple of Time! <laughs> Let me put a marker there. Buddy, you could have just said the Temple of Time. All right, anyway, um, we can, yeah, what is closest? I would say the closest with the least amount of obstacles would probably be the Shrine of Resurrection. So we're gonna go there. Fucking 
that confused me so bad the first time because I was like, it has to be the Temple of Time, right? Right? The Temple of Time. And then, like, I kept getting confused. And I'm like, it, it, it is the Temple of Time. Just a spoiler alert is where we're supposed to meet him. Um, but yeah, the first time I'm like, why wouldn't you just tell me to meet you at the Temple of Time? <laughs> it's marked on the map, bro. Here we are at the Shrine of Resurrection. And I actually want to run back to where we were sleeping before. Because, I believe... Ah, oh, it's not- Okay, there's a Korok seed that exists here. Just so you know. Um, we can't get it yet for whatever reason. It's not letting us have it. But um, there is a Korok seed. I think maybe we have to leave the plateau first. And then it'll let us have it. But... Let's get on out here. And truth be told, I'm probably gonna put... Um, you need, similar to... How in the past you needed four pieces of heart to get a heart container. In this game you need four pieces of- you need four spirit orbs to increase your stamina or your hearts. And uh, truth be told, I'll, I'm probably gonna sink it into stamina first. Just because stamina goes such a long way in this game. Um, but let's make our way over to the Temple of Time. And whatnot. Um... I actually want to grab this apple because we are in that part of the game where we just don't have a bustling inventory. So, the more the merrier, really. There's a template time. I hear some bokoblins nearby. I would like to avoid them if possible. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, don't look at me, bro. Don't look at me, bro. Don't look at me, bro. Okay, cool. Cool. Don't have to fight up a goblin. We can come over here to the Temple of Time. And I think I'm actually gonna take the front entrance over here. Um, we can actually upgrade. Use our- we can exchange our spirit orbs in a second here. <laughs> Um, you'll notice that there is a massive ladder. We'll be using that in a moment. But first we can come in here. And there is a Hylia statue. Those of you that have played Skyward Sword, this should look familiar. Ish. Oh, a bunch of little baby Hylias around her. We can pray. You who have conquered the shrines and claimed their spirit orbs, I can offer you great power. It appears you have claimed four spirit orbs. In exchange for four spirit orbs, I will amplify your being. So tell me what it is that you desire. A heart container, a stamina vessel, or never mind. I'm gonna stick it in stamina. You wish to expand your stamina wheel, yes? Yes. I shall grant the power you seek. The size of your stamina wheel has been increased, allowing you to perform more actions before getting tired. Go and bring peace. Yeah, go and bring peace to Hyrule. Sorry, I stumbled over that. That important Whoa. fucking line. The blessing of the goddess has made you that much more resilient, I see. Hmm. Here I am. Get up here, quickly. God damn it, old man. Um, I'm actually wondering. Hmm. Hmm, that's very interesting. I was expecting a certain flower to be near that statue. But I don't know why. Just for shits and giggles, really. But here, you don't run out of stamina on ladders, though. You can jump up. And it will refill. Thankfully, it doesn't tap your stamina. We can climb on top of the Temple of Time. And it's really interesting, if I can talk about the music for a second before we meet with the old man, um, that the music, and I mentioned this earlier in the playthrough, that the music is very subtle, it's slowed down, and it's m most importantly fragmented. And that really says a lot because 
Hyrule, we've been asleep for a hundred years and we don't really remember things. Um, so it makes sense that these iconic songs that we've been so used to remembering throughout the series are fragmented and they're um, receded back into the atmosphere and that we don't quite hear them as clearly as we're used to. And I think it's very interesting from sort of a, you know, expression point of view and really driving that point home of we don't quite remember what we should remember. But we can come up here. <laughs> well done there, young one. Now then, the time has come to show you who I truly am. I was King Rome Bosphoramus Hyrule. I was the last leader of Hyrule. A kingdom which no longer exists. <sighs> the Great Calamity was merciless. It devastated everything in its path, Lo. A century ago, it was then that my life was taken away from me. And since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. I did not think it wise to overwhelm you while your memory was still fragile. So rather than that, I thought it best to assume a temporary form. Forgive me. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened. 100 years ago. To know Calamity Ganon's true form, one must know the story from an age long past. The Demon King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. Stories of Ganon were passed from generation to generation in the form of legends and fairy tales. But there was also a prophecy. The signs of a resurrection of Calamity Ganon are clear, and the power to oppose it lies dormant beneath the ground. We decided to heed the prophecy and began excavating large areas of land. It wasn't long before we discovered several ancient relics made by the hands of our distant ancestors. These relics, the Divine Beasts, were giant machines piloted by warriors. We also found the Guardians, an army of mechanical soldiers who fought autonomously. This coincided with ancient legends oft repeated throughout our land. We also learned of a princess with a sacred power and her appointed knight, chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. It was they who sealed Ganon away using the power of these ancient relics. One hundred years ago, there was a princess set to inherit a sacred power and a skilled knight at her side. It was clear that we must follow our ancestors' path. We selected four skilled individuals from across Hyrule and tasked them with the duty of piloting the Divine Beasts. With the Princess as their commander, we dubbed these pilots Champions, a name that would solidify their unique bond. The Princess, her appointed knight, and the rest of the Champions were on the brink of sealing away Ganon. But nay. Ganon was cunning, and he responded with a plan beyond our imagining. He appeared from deep below Hyrule Castle, seized control of the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, us. The champions lost their lives, those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight, gravely wounded, collapsed while defending the princess. And thus, 
the kingdom of Hyrule was devastated absolutely by Calamity Ganon. However, the princess survived to face Ganon alone. Link, you are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. That princess was my own daughter, my dear Zelda. And the courageous knight who protected her right up to the very end. That knight was none other than you, Link. You fought valiantly when your fate took an unfortunate turn. And then, you were taken to the Shrine of Resurrection. Here you now stand, revitalized 100 years later. The words of guidance you have been hearing since your awakening are from Princess Zelda herself. Even now, as she works to restrain Ganon from within Hyrule Castle, she calls out for your help. However, my daughter's power will soon be exhausted. Once that happens, Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Considering that I could not save my own kingdom, I have no right to ask this of you, Link. But I am powerless here. You must save her, my daughter, and do whatever it takes to annihilate Ganon. Somehow, Ganon has maintained control over all four divine beasts, as well as those guardians swarming around Hyrule Castle. I believe it would be quite reckless for you to head directly to the castle at this point. I suggest that you make your way east out to one of the villages in the wilderness. Follow the road out to Kakariko Village. There you will find the Elder Impa. She will tell you more about the path that lies ahead. Consult the map on your Shiga slate for the precise location of Kakariko Village. Make your way past the twin summits of the dueling peaks. From there, follow the road as it proceeds north. Hmm. Go on, here's the paraglider, just as I promised. Buddy, you're gonna drop that crazy shit on me and you're just like, okay, here's the paraglider. You just told me I was in a coma for a hundred years because I died a hundred years ago. And our bad bitch Zelda is the only thing holding shit together right now. And you're just gonna be like, yeah, here's a paraglider, as we, as we talked about. Buddy! Anyway, we got the paraglider. It's an item that you receive from the king on the Great Plateau. It allows you to sail through the sky. Press X while you're in the air to use it. All joking aside, though, paraglider, really fucking useful. <laughs> And we've completed our tutorial section. With that, you should be able to safely fly off the cliffs surrounding this area. And I think that's it. R Motherfucker's just gonna turn us loose after dropping that bomb on us. <laughs> I've told you everything I can. Link, you must save Hyrule. New objective, destroy Ganon. And then the main quest is to seek out Impa. Your girl Impa's still here. Well, holy shit, gang. Anyway, let's crack this bad boy open. Got a soldier's bow. Um, not for that shit. My uh, inventory is not full. Excuse me. Hold on. Let's drop one of these shithouse bows, shall we? And put on a real arrow. Okay. Okay, Soldier's Bow. A bow designed for armed conflict. Inflicts more damage than a civilian bow, but it will still burn if it touches fire. That's fine. Um, yeah. So, we just got a lot of shit thrown at us. And we got a lot of shit to do. Well, in the next episode, we leave the plateau and make our way to Kakariko Village to seek out Impa. You guys, we are barely scratching the tip of the iceberg. I hope you join me for the rest of Breath of the Wild. Later, y'all.